Good afternoon. Uh, this is Scott Harrell with the UMHS Alumni Association, and today we're speaking with UMHS 2016 graduate, Dr. David Hankin. And Dr. Hankin, I want to welcome you today for uh, taking the time to speak with us. And can you just fill us in a little bit about where you're working now? Sure. Thank you, Scott. Right now, I am working downtown in Detroit at Henry Ford Health. I am the medical director for outpatient palliative care. I completed my three years of internal medicine residency. I finished that in 2020. I did a fellowship in hospice and palliative medicine at the University of Texas in San Antonio. And then I moved back to Detroit and have been at Henry Ford Health since. Okay, great. So you've done a mixture of, you've done internal medicine, you've done hospice and uh, palliative care. And for what you're doing right now, uh, Dr. Hankin, what is a typical work day like for you? What is the day in the life of Dr. Hankin? Yeah, sure. Well, <laughs> I get up early. I still like to prioritize my own health and wellness. So I do some exercising in the morning, I get up at five, uh, get downtown, work, I chart review for about 45 minutes to an hour look at all the patients for the day. And then I usually, on an average day, I see about eight patients a day, four in the morning, four in the afternoon. Some days I have more of an administrative day where I work on projects, policies, uh, take meetings. Um, and I like to come home at five o'clock. I hopefully will leave and spend the rest of the day with my kids and my wife. Okay, great. And could you just fill us in a little bit of why, why you chose UMHS over other uh, med schools? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> at the time, when I was applying to medical school, I was looking at a few different Caribbean medical schools. And the draw to UMHS at the time, I, I liked the smaller class sizes. I had talked to Michelle Perez and I had talked to another few uh, students who were attending at the time. <clears throat> and they had shared with me that not only the smaller class sizes, all the professors knew you by name. There was a, it was more of a smaller feel, something that I felt confident that would allow me to get done everything I needed to with perhaps, uh, a closer eye on the importance of my education through the, the professors and the, the teachers, everyone that was there that, and and it did, it, it was exactly what I wanted. Okay, great. And I remember while you were still a UMHS student, um, you were actually in the New York office for a while and you wrote a guest blog post for me for the UMHS Endeavor, it's a few years ago. And it was about how you didn't originally do well on the MCAT but you excelled in med school anyway by improving your study candidates and you managed to get at the time what was one of the highest step one scores um, at the time at UMHS. Can you just tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, I, so coming <clears throat> from undergrad, studying for the MCAT, I really didn't at the time have the best study technique, I would say. I thought I could study well. I put the time and the hours in, but I didn't <clears throat> really study as, as well as I could have. When I started medical school, I, I started studying in a new way where I would sit down after each class and just read through the notes, take notes by hand, reread my notes again, trying to really learn the material as opposed to just rote memorization of facts and, and material. Every semester I would do the same thing and every semester it would be more reinforced. And I, I studied really well. I learned how to really put in the time and maximize the amount of time spent studying efficiently. I ended up doing really well on my boards. I haven't for a few years, but I was tutoring for both step one and step two for a few years after I had taken the, the boards. Um, it, yeah, it, it, uh, I really learned how to study in medical school. That was for me the the time where I it really made sense. Okay, great. And I remember you also worked as a teaching assistant while at UMHS, and 
you uh, worked for a while in the New York office with M Michelle Perez while you were in Michigan. Uh, what were these experiences like for you uh, working, you know, as a TA and also uh, working yeah. uh, for admissions? What was that like for you? The teaching assistant was one of my favorite. I, whatever course, whatever class you, you excelled in, they would ask you or offer you the opportunity to be a teaching assistant. So I was able to do that for a few of the classes just to be able to spend time teaching the material that I already took, going over with colleagues and friends, just teaching them how to understand the, the new material for the exam. I love teaching. So for me, that was a great opportunity. Currently, I, I teach now in my role as a attending physician. I am associate professor for Michigan State University. So I have the opportunity to teach students, residents, and fellows. So I think that was, for me, a good introduction to how to teach as a TA. And then after I finished uh, in 2016, going into 2017, I had the opportunity to work with Michelle, like you said, in the both in the Michigan and the New York office. Um, I was able to do some recruitment. I was uh, fortunate that I was uh, able to do some interviewing as well of prospective students. That was a very great opportunity. And then it kind of showed me, I, I kind of refer to it as almost like the administrative side of, of medical school um, to be part of that. And then that kind of taught me that I do have a, a liking for the administrative side. So as I've been in my uh, three years of attending, um, I've had the opportunity to do more of the administrative, to be the medical director, just because I had known that uh, working in those offices, being able to be part of that, it was rewarding for me. Okay, great. And that really got brings us to my next question, Dr. Hankin. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to current and prospective students, UMHS students, either uh, thinking about going into internal medicine or any other specialty, or just thinking about if they're prospective students, thinking about why they should go to UMHS over other schools. For anybody that's a prospective student debating going to school anywhere, I say do it. If this is something you want to do, it, it can be done. UMHS for me was the platform that allowed me to accomplish my goals, my career goals. I, I say, if you're on the fence about it, if you don't know if you want to go to school, reach out to anybody and just hear their experiences too. But uh, this this school, UMHS, was for me the opportunity, the, the foothold to push me into my career. Okay, great. And uh, Dr. Hankin, is there anything else that you would like to add uh, to current or prospective students or even alumni out there or, or anything that you'd like to add that we haven't covered? Uh, you know, one of the things I was... I should have brought up earlier just the opportunities that UMHS had, the rotations we did as students across the state, uh, across the country, rather. Um, there was so much resource, so much opportunity. That was another driver for me to pursue my my medical education at UMHS. Um, it really is a great opportunity. The school was incredible, and it it allowed me to to be where I am right now and meet all of my goals for my own career. Okay, great. And uh, anything else you want to add? Can't think of anything else right now. Okay, and students are up, or prospective students are, um, you're available via email if somebody wants to reach out with any questions? Absolutely, I'm happy to, happy to chat. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time, Dr. Hankin, and uh, best of luck to you, okay? Thanks, Scott. All Good right, take care. You as well.